In this video, I'll show you how you can play PS5 games on your Steam Deck. So before we get started, there are going to be some prerequisites here. Obviously, you're going to need a Steam Deck, uh, preferably a Steam Deck OLED for the best experience. If you don't have one, you just have an LCD Steam Deck, you'll be perfectly fine. It's just that the performance is slightly better with that Wi-Fi 6E chip. You're obviously also going to need a PS5. The gold plating is optional. Uh, if you want to see how this monstrosity was created, check out, the, check out the video we posted over the weekend on the Jacob R channel. The last thing you really want is an Ethernet hardline connection from your PS5 to your router so you have the best experience. Obviously you, uh, when you're playing in handheld mode like this on the Steam Deck, you're not gonna be able to have an ethernet connection to it. Um, but that's okay, as you'll see, it's it's perfectly fine. Um, but the, for the best results, definitely want ethernet. Uh, in this situation here, I have it on five gigahertz and that's perfectly fine. Um, so depending on your Wi-Fi situation, depending on the router you have, that might be okay for you as well. I'm just saying that uh, to mitigate any potential network issues, definitely go on Ethernet if you're not already. You also might want a keyboard. We're going to be going into desktop mode for a little bit here in this tutorial. So it might just make it easier during certain points, especially if you're doing some of the optional steps. I'll briefly go over a little later. Keyboard might be might be good for you. So the end goal in here in this video is to get this app right here, Chiaki 4 Deck, installed on your Steam Deck. Uh, you can also install an app called Chiaki. Uh, Chiaki is like a universal program that can work on a lot of different operating systems for PS5 uh, remote play. Uh, but the Chiaki 4 Deck app specifically is going to give you some extra features that we'll go over a little later. So the first thing we're going to need to do is boot into desktop mode. And if you haven't done that before, you can just hold the power button on your Steam Deck, go on down here to switch to desktop, press A, and that'll get you into desktop mode. Once we're in desktop mode, go on down to your taskbar here and open up the Discover Store. Then you're going to click on the search bar, hold the Steam button, and press the X button to open up your keyboard if you've never done that before. And we're just going to type in Chiaki and press enter. We'll then see two options here. We got Chiaki and Chiaki for Deck. Um, for various reasons, Chiaki for Deck is just, it's just better for our use case, so we're gonna install that one. You just open it up like I just did there, click install, and it'll install. You then just click launch, and that'll open our app up. And my PS5 is already uh, registered to my Steam Deck, so it's showing up here already. You probably won't have a PS5 up there for some reasons that we'll go over later from some settings we gotta set up on the PS5 itself. But let's just go over some settings real quick while we're in here. You click this little cog wheel to open up the settings. And for the most part, we're gonna leave everything the way it is. We're just gonna adjust a few specific things depending on your use case. Some of the most interesting features are this uh, PS5 features experimental thing. This will like basically turn on like a haptic feedback vibration thing using the track pads. It's okay. It's just, it's not quite good enough to match the dual senses like haptic feedback capability. But if you turn down the, uh, in your PlayStation 5 settings, if you turn down your, your haptic feedback options to like the low setting, it, it's better than you think it would be, but I, personally, I would just rather play without vibration and have my DualSense just be for all that. Uh, by the way, using Chiaki, you can connect a DualSense and use that natively, and it, and it does work pretty well. So you can get the PS5 features like your adaptive triggers and your DualSense stuff, but you have to use a DualSense for that, obviously. We're just gonna go ahead and scroll down here and change our resolution option to 1080p. FPS should stay at 60. Bit rate. Now this is very dependent on your internet situation and not, not your internet speed, but your router uh, specifically, because this is a local stream, right? So if you have a kind of a crummy router that your, your ISP gave you, you might not have the best luck um, with like 30,000 bit rate, what, like, which is I'm gonna, what I'm gonna recommend here. But if you have five gigahertz or your PS5 is on ethernet and stuff like that, it, it, play around with this. That's, that's the point of this menu here. I want you guys to go in here, play around with it, see if 30K is too much. If it looks great, that's, that's, that, that should be perfect. Um, if it is too much, go down to like 15,000 and or play around with things. So what do I mean by too much? Um, what I mean is that like, you start streaming the PS5 and it, and it looks super blocky or it's laggy or something just isn't working right. Um, so in terms of bitrate, that's very dependent on your situation. So definitely feel free to experiment with it. But as I said, I'm just gonna put in 30,000. Leave the codec on H.265 for now. Audio buffer size, I leave by default. This little setting right here, decode settings, hardware decode method. I find the most success if you click on the Vappy one. I don't know if that's how you say that. And then we're gonna head down to register new. And this will open up a prompt to input our PSN account ID in our PIN. Now, what the heck does that mean? It's really not that complicated. We just need two numbers. One of them we're gonna get from our PS5 uh, itself. That's gonna be the PIN. And the other, we're just gonna go to a website real quick and copy and paste it. And that's gonna be your PSN account ID. Everything else in this menu, we just don't touch. So the website you need to go to is called psn.flipscreen.games. If you type that in just as is, you know, no www. no nothing, psn.flipscreen.games you'll get to this website right here and all you need to do is put in your PSN username. Now it's very important that you use your PSN username. 
This is different than your, like, your display name. Let me show you real quick what I mean. So using uh, Jacob's profile here for an example, your PSN username is gonna be the jmoney0021, not the Jacob R. Uh, that you see on this page here. So whatever that is for you, go ahead and put that in this field here, you see. So once you insert your PlayStation ID, you'll get this encoded ID for Chiaki thing right here. And all you gotta do is click copy and that'll copy it to your clipboard. Then go back into Chiaki with your cursor over the field here. You can press the left trigger, go down to here and click paste. And that'll put that right in there just like that. Now for the pin, you need to get back on your PS5, uh, go to settings here, go down to system and then scroll down to remote play. Click on that. Make sure enable remote play is actually on, by the way. This is also this is also a good chance to check your network settings. Even if you're plugged in with Ethernet, make sure you've actually configured it. Um, I've done that plenty of times. You plug the Ethernet cable in, you forget to reconfigure it. Your PS5 has been on Wi-Fi the whole time. You didn't know for like six months. So definitely give that a double check before we continue. After that, just click on link device and you should get a code here. You're gonna take this code and you're gonna put it just as it's written into the pin field here on Chiaki. <laughs> so I actually ran into an error. I've gotten this to work before, so I don't, I don't know what happened here, but if you run into a problem, you'll probably need to go back onto your PS5 and generate a new pin real quick. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> I know why I messed up. I'm on the wrong account. Yeah, I should mention that this is account specific. You need to make sure that you are signed in to the proper account that you're trying to link to. I mean, that should be obvious, but I'm just stupid. There we go, I actually got it this time. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, this is probably a good time to mention. If you do have problems, you have any trouble at all, um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the Chiaki 4 deck uh, GitHub uh, page that has a very thorough tutorial on a bunch of different problems you can have. And it's gonna be a much more thorough breakdown if you're looking for that. It's also gonna have a bunch of extra features I'm not gonna go over from like automation that allows you to like boot up the Chiaki 4 deck app and have it immediately turn on your PS5 and connect and everything. I'm not going over that, it's a little too complex. I just wanna make it so you guys can as simply as possible uh, play your PS5 games on your Steam Deck. But once it's registered, just go ahead and click close. And then you should see your PS5 right here, ready to go, because it's uh, it should still be on. Just for the sake of testing, let's go ahead and click on this. You might need to click it a lot of times. It's just how the app works, I don't know why. And there we go, we're connected up. Now you're not gonna be able to really do much here because we're still in desktop mode in the Steam Deck. Um, so your controls are gonna be a little bit wonky. So for now, just go ahead and close out of this. To do that, you can, you can hold the Steam button to turn on your mouse on your trackpad and just double click the screen. That'll get you out of full screen. And then you can just click the little X here. Uh, it'll ask you here, do you want the console to go into sleep mode? Um, I like to leave it in sleep mode, so yes. We'll just click yes on that, and that will automatically turn your PS5 into rest mode when you are done playing. All right, the only thing we really have left to do now is to open up Steam and add this game to our Steam library. If this is the first time you're doing this, just click on this little add a game button down in the left-hand corner, add a non-Steam game. <laughs> My Steam app just crashed. Just Steam Deck things. All right, as I was saying, click add a game, add a non-Steam game. And then it should just show up right here as Chiaki for deck. Just go ahead and click the little checkbox on that and then click add selected programs. And then you'll see it on your game list right here as Chiaki for deck. At this point, you're ready to go. If you don't care about any of the custom icons or anything like that, you're basically ready to have this work in game mode. And we'll go over that all that in a second and have a good time. Start testing things out, see how your connection is. Um, there are a few extra steps though, if you care about like customization and stuff. So if you just like press the left trigger on this background part here, you can set a custom background um, and a custom logo that'll show up here as well. Once again, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to that GitHub page that'll give you a more thorough breakdown of how to set all that up, get all your images loaded and everything. Uh, and it also has like a very convenient little zip file with a bunch of like images that you could just put in here. So everything can look nice and pretty. But for now, we're just gonna go back to game mode. So either click on your return to gaming mode if you have that on your taskbar, or you more likely, if it's the first time you're in desktop mode, you're gonna have it in the upper left-hand corner right here. All right, so back in gaming mode, you're just gonna go to your library by clicking the Steam button, then clicking on library, and then press the R1 button up here to go all the way over to the right to get to your non-Steam games, and you should see Chiaki 4 deck right here. Just press A on that, click play, and you'll be in. The default configuration should work great uh, for your controller support, but if you wanna change that, just press the Steam button while you're in the game, go down to controller settings, Click controller settings, press A on that, and then you should see under community layouts, the Chalky 4 deck plus mic toggle gyro. I, I find this one works pretty well. So as you can see, I'm now in Chiaki 4 deck, but I'm not seeing my PS5 here. This is a problem I've noticed um, when it use, whenever using a PS5 that's connected to Wi-Fi, just sometimes it just doesn't show up. I don't really know why. Um, it could also have to do with some other random setting, but if this ever happens, you can always just, you can always just turn on your PS5 and that'll work. I've also had success with uh, restarting uh, Chiaki a few times that'll eventually show up, but in this situation, we're just gonna 
turn it on manually. Typically, if it did show up as like a little orange icon here in rest mode, you just click that a bunch of times. It'll ask you if you wanna send a wake up request. You just click yes on that, and that'll turn your PS5 on, and then eventually it should show up blue in this menu. Oh, one thing you might wanna troubleshoot, that if you're running into problems here, uh, I had this happen to me as well. If you're not getting your PS5 to show up here at all, double check that you are on the same network on both your Steam Deck and your PS5. Um, a lot of you probably have like 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz connections. Um, definitely pick the five gigahertz, but make sure you're on the five gigahertz on your Steam Deck and your PS5. Otherwise you're gonna have problems seeing uh, both your machines. But once it shows up blue like this, just click it a bunch of times. I don't know why sometimes you have to click it like 30 times to get it to work, but you're gonna get this black screen for a little while, but eventually you're, yep, just like that, your game will show up. I am getting some dropouts and strange color glitching here. So I'm gonna mess with the settings a little bit, the bitrate and whatnot. Um, the easiest way to get out of the stream that you're currently in. If you configured your controller profile earlier, like I showed you to that one that I, I selected from the community layouts, you could just press the bottom left back button. I actually have to hold it and it'll pop up this menu. And then I'll just say, no, go, don't go into sleep mode because we're gonna reconnect here in a second. And then you can mess around with your settings with your touch screen here. <laughs> yeah, this happens sometimes. All right, all right. So this specific issue I've noticed um, you get if you launch back into Steam from the desktop mode, but you don't restart your Steam Deck. I don't, I don't know why, but <laughs> let's just go ahead and restart. Give the Steam Deck a full restart and that should solve this problem. To be fair, this is giving you a full experience. Uh, you guys are probably gonna run into random issues that you didn't see me run into um, because of specific circumstances that your Steam Deck or PS5 or network might be having. So expect to run into some headaches. This is not supposed to be an OEM experience, but as I'll show you here in a moment, it's pretty worth it. It's pretty amazing the, what you're able to stream on, especially on the OLED Steam Deck. Oh, look at that. Uh, I guess restarting it even fixed our weird rest mode issue. So here, I can actually show you this now. Console is currently in standby mode. Should we send a wake up packet? Yes, 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 okay. And that'll turn on your PS5. And after some waiting, once again, just mash that button and we're in. So at this point, you can start playing your PS5 just like you were playing on the couch. It works pretty great. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna get in here on Astro's Playroom. As you can see, even your touchpad works. It's pretty cool. And I hope this is coming across well on camera, but as you guys may or may not be able to see, this is immaculate. I'm getting some random frame drops, you know, 59, 60 FPS. You can just tell it's not like 100% there, but it's super smooth. And most importantly, there is some crazy good input delay for streaming. I mean, I, I've done a lot of streaming on various platforms, various services, and in my experience, this is some of the very best uh, game streaming I've ever seen. I am getting some random uh, color issues though. So if you are having some interference or some random banding and stuff like that, it might be smart to drop your bitrate a little bit. In my experience, you can go anywhere above 20,000 is gonna look really good. 30,000 looks really, really great on the Steam Deck screen, but you know, 20,000 is fine and you might have a better experience depending on your router. And as you can see, you even have gyro support. So for the most part, you have everything you need. You're just not gonna have, as you guys can see, we're getting some random uh, drawbacks and stuff. Again, just the nature of Wi-Fi. Um, on my home ethernet connection on my PS5, I definitely do not have problems like that, but you know, I think that's just the nature of a wireless connection. But pretty much you have all of the main functionality of a DualSense um, other than the fancy vibration and adaptive, adaptive triggers, but you can play full PS5 games, no problem, even if it requires gyro or touchpad or anything like that. Oh, there we go again, <laughs> glorious. Oh, and it's gone, okay. <laughs> I kinda wanna see that again, that was cool. And in case you're curious, uh, battery life doing this is insane. So I have half charge here and I still have three hours and 41 minutes, so. You know, full charge, that's over seven hours of gaming uh, via streaming. It's pretty amazing. Especially if you already own some like PS5 games and you've been thinking of playing like the Steam versions, like if you wanna play God of War or something. Um, yeah, you can play that on Steam Deck, but like in my opinion, you can kind of get a better experience at a higher frame rate with good enough input delay uh, with a significantly better battery life by just streaming it if you're playing it at home anyway. So, you know, just my opinion, you can't take it portably of course. and. And I wish like Sony would implement like some sort of like cross save functionality between their Sony games and their their PC releases of their of their games, but you know, maybe someday. 
But at this point, I think I've shown you all you need to know. Like I said, if you want to go more in depth, you want to customize things, you want to improve your experience even more by adding some automation to the system so you don't got to click no buttons, you just open the app and it turns on your PS5 and it's all great, definitely check that link in the description. Follow that guide pretty thoroughly. It'll take you to the right place. You're going to need some extra things. You might need a keyboard and stuff. It's a little bit more complicated, but for the most part, if you're able to get this far, I think you can handle it. Or if you're happy with what I showed you today, you're going to have a lot of fun. I don't really think you need to do anything else to have a good time. Uh, at this point, you pretty much have the fanciest PS portal you can buy. Works better in my opinion too, but you know. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Smoke and Silicon. Oh, look at that. We got the, we got the green glitch. We got the green glitch. Amazing. <laughs> anyway, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.